stuff. Let's look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 because I want to show you what we do with our methodology. Paul writes to Timothy, who is, a, by the way, a preacher and an apostle, and he's been left in charge of this situation. And, and uh, Paul is writing to this, this young man, probably in his mid-30s by now, and he's saying to him, flee youthful lusts and pursue righteousness and faith and love and peace uh, among all those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Flee youthful lusts and pursue righteousness. Ah, doesn't that sound spiritual, holy, holy religious, holy spiritual religious? I'm just going to flee lusts. There it is, whatever it is, whatever yours is, I'm just going to turn and run. But I'm going to run toward something. I'm going to run, I'm going to run toward righteousness, whatever that is. I'm going to find out what it is, and then I'm going to run after it. I'm going to go pursue righteousness. And while I'm pursuing righteousness, I'm going to, I'm going to pursue faith too. I'm going, to, I'm going to figure out what that one is and pursue it, and I'm going to figure out what this one is and pursue this all the time. I'm running for that, and I'm chasing these. But not just that. I'm going to pursue righteousness and faith and love while I'm fleeing youthful us. I'm tired and we haven't even started. What's wrong with this picture? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. Now, doesn't the Bible say flee youthful, youthful us? And doesn't it say pursue righteousness? and pursue faith, and pursue love, and pursue peace. Doesn't it say that? Doesn't that sound like something you're supposed to go do? Now I'm here to tell you, after 40, 40 something years as a Christian, you can do that and stay really, really busy. But don't expect change. Expect disappointment. Expect frustration. Expect discouragement. And expect to quit. Because pursuing righteousness for righteousness sake is the wrong pursuit. And pursuing faith for faith's sake is the wrong pursuit. As is pursuing love and pursuing peace because you will spend a lot of energy chasing something you cannot find as long as you're trying to do it on your own. Note the last phrase, and pursue peace among all those who call upon the Lord with a what? A pure heart in dealing with the lives of people they don't always want to be free for the sake of being free. I've discovered that lots of people want to negotiate with God because they don't want the full extent of the punishment for their activity. They want to be able to manage the activity to a place they don't get really punished. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't want to step off this cliff I just want to be able to continue to walk along the edge for the exhilaration it brings me in my soul. I would submit to you that's not a pure heart. There are all kinds of reasons that people come to Christ to barter with their life. God, if you will get me out of this, I promise, da-da-da-da-da-da. All right? And listen, we're, we're well able to do that no matter how old we are in the Lord. We're well able to quid pro quo with God. You do this, I'll do that, I promise. From a pure heart, the root to the solution is what's going on in your heart. Why do you want to be free? Is it to be free indeed or simply to be free of the entanglement of this present mess so I can go pursue another mess? These injunctions that Paul gives here, 
should be seen as appointments with grace, means of grace. What would happen if you actually began to pursue righteousness? Well, I'm not sure, Pastor, because I'm not sure I understand what righteousness means. A basic definition of righteousness is right standing. All right? Now, let's just think about just that one thought for a moment. What would it mean to you to be in right standing with God? Would there be a measure of peace in your soul? Would there be a place of confidence that we might mistake for faith? Would there? See, I've, di I've discovered when people are not at rest in their conscience, they don't feel like they have any faith. 